Yehovah Mulak Ola Mulamad Yehovah Mulak Yame Rakis Yehovah Gadol Makarian Tios Yehovah Yadonai Yehovah Elohim Kurios Tios Panta Kreta Kurios Tios Pistos Elda et Ehova Yel Emuna Yehova Ibas Leon Kurios Otios O Panta Kreta Baslios Baslion Kai Kurios Kurion Yehova the Bar Halal Elohim the Bar Halal Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura El Elohim Israel Jesus Christos Ton Christoni Sunton Kurion Kurion Nimohagion Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Yehova Ishmal Kam Yehova Shamma Yelnakum Yehova Yelnakum Yapa Natsak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triambos Yehova Jesus Christos Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Mororosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Ilayla Eshalut Yehova Malak Yehova Malak Olam Olam Ad Yehova Elohenum Yehova Ekad Gadol Gadol Gebura Zoan Logan Ogar Tautios Dulas Desmios Despotes Dikayesune in Isus Christos Kurion 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 Hagion 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 Numa Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Derek Emunabakar Vishvat Shava The Megalogai of Yahweh Elelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing how to prevail our enemy, as David prevailed against the Goliath Philistine. The Hebrew word which has been used in First Samuel chapter 17 in verse number 50, Kazakh, emphasizes the point, without fail, day by day, you have to take up your cross and follow my Christ. That's the only key how you can prevail your enemy. The English word prevailed, the Hebrew word is called Kazakh. And the word Kazakh meant to say, build up your wall of fortification to dig and take with the great intention from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun. Only to learn the pale wonders of his glory. 
if that's the principal theme of your life in order to build up your wall of fortification no matter what from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun you need to dig and take the word of lord god you need to learn many more things from the lord's mind you need to say like the way how moses was not satisfied though he spent twice in the presence of lord god the father that he says in numbers chapter 32 lord i want to see you then he said you cannot see me face to face and he gave him the back that is called the thing pertaining to a man which he cannot look his back the revolution pertaining to this life on this earth so you should have the desire to greed more to have more as man has greed and lust to have more in the lustful patterns of the old sin nature if a man has a greed to have more to lust more of lord's thought of lord's view point of life of lord's day by day inculcation of bible doctrine really blessed is such a person on the face of this earth is going to have a witness not only in the earth even as witness in the heaven as paul was strengthened in acts chapter 23 in verse number 11 saying that you shall be a witness to me even in the heaven even in the rome likewise he says to david saying that he is the witness for me in the heaven in psalms chapter 89 in verse number 25 and following he says unto him about this great life of david particularly to begin with verse number 20 i have found david my servant with my holy oil i have anointed him with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him the elmi shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him and i will beat down his enemies before the face and plague them that hate him but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted and i will set his hand also into the sea and his right hand into the rivers he shall cry unto me you are my father my god and the rock of my salvation also i will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth my mercy that is unfailing love of god kesed i will keep for him forevermore and my covenant shall stand fast with him he said also will i endure will i make to endure forever and his throne will be the as the days of heaven if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgment if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments then i will visit the transgression with the rod and the iniquity with stripes nevertheless my loving kindness i will not utterly take from him nor suffer my faithfulness to fail my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips once i have sworn by my holiness that i will not lie unto david he seed shall end your forever and is thrown as the sun before me and you know what does it say now in verse number 37 it shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven if every believer is able to prevail against the cunning fables of satan and to take up his cross and carry in the work of lord god as number one priority for the breath he breathes every day <laughs> he not only witnesses in jerusalem as he said to paul even in rome you shall witness but his seed will be forever in the standards to call 
as a faithful witness in heaven such a great privilege they possess who walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit day by day prevailing to do nothing but the will of lord god the father so dear brethren use the privacy of your priest to confess your sins through rebound and we shall come back and continue what lord god the father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory in his matchless marvelous infinite divine glorious grace we shall continue after this prayer infinitely divine holy father once again coming into the grace of lord to learn the truth what else we need or have on this earth o lord then to prevail against our enemies by having that kazakh archeo relationship with thee all the days of this life help us a lot to build a wall of fortification in our thinking in such a manner that we haven't found today something new if we haven't found to learn something great from your divine revolution which is so vast infallible and inerrant our days have gone in waste and that o lord as we come to take and take every day your matchless wonderful word we pray the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost to challenge us by those messages and inculcate our hearts to easily make up our life to the praise of your glory rather than spending our time in search of vanity or in vanities on this earth so father as we're going to study the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's state in every past we pray the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost to enlighten to challenge and to bless us by the message which are prepared and kept for us on today's state in every past to the praise of your glory in matchless marvelous infinite divine glorious grace in christ's name we ask sovereign lord amen in second timothy chapter 4 in 2 Timothy chapter 3 not 4 in verse number 5 we have this word which says having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away the word having meant to say to have and to hold echo and the word godliness meant to say use beyond and the word form is called morphosis and the word morphosis meant to say forming or shaping and then it is befitting a thing to say that truly they express the fact so here the brethren he is saying having a form of godliness and what is that form of godliness today they are saying with Christ Jesus our Lord of a God we can prevail yes indeed you can prevail how when you are like faithful witness in the heaven as we illustrated from Psalms 89 verses 20 through 37 in the life of king david if you are really obeying the mandates of the lord of a god when he sinned he said lord against thee and against thee only i have sinned the work which Christ our Lord of God should have taken long back in chapter 23 of second samuel or 21 of second samuel he takes long time to finish it because of the rebellion of his son Absalom and then we find the way how he is going to come back to the throne again and then when he comes back he is going to now pay on behalf of this Saul's attitude in killing those priests he executes that until that time he was been stuck up in this issue of bathsheba sin you know the grace of our lord of god has been wasted there so david comes back and says lord against thee and against thee only i have sinned and that should be the ultimate theme for everyone to be a witness to have a legendary impact of witness not only on this earth even in the heaven you should be having such a great witness meant to say what 
breath by breath, you need to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and you need to overcome your enemy. How? If you have been mindful, breath by breath, second by second, to learn something new from the Bible. Because there are a lot, many things, vast many things for us to learn from the word of Lord God. So, dear brethren, you may think you may having a form of godliness, but you are denying the power thereof. That's what many people are trying to do in this present Christendom. They are simply denying the power thereof. Therefore, Lord God the Father, He teaches a very simple lesson, saying that if you people would come to take your cross every day and follow my Christ, He says, you will be having a very, very great blessing in the presence of the Lord. Simply carry your cross and make up your life to be taken every day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. So, dear brethren, we have this great chapter for us in Second Kings chapter 18 when he said the standards how Satan tries to tempt you to say that God is against you through this lesson of Rab Shakak, what we learn. But over here, dear brethren, we learn the importance emphasizing that Lord God the Father is with those men, stating to the point, those who really and humbly come upon to make up their lives as per the standards of the word of Lord God. So in Second Chronicles chapter 20 as well, we have one illustration of the same situation. He says, after it came, and it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, in verse 1 of Second Chronicles 20, and the children of Amnon and with the other beside the Amnites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the side Syria, and behold, there be in Hazanozothamar, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And all Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah, and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven, and rulest not over the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is thee not the power nor might, so that nor be able to withstand thee. And art thou God, who drivest out the inhabitants of this land before thy people, Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee in sanctuary, therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, that's the great education prayer of Solomon, as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in the presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then you will hear and help. In the same thing what we have now, your body is now called to the temple of the living Lord of our God, and that doesn't mean to say that you continue in sin. So, and now behold the children of Amnon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom who does not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which you have given us to inheritate. O our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. So now he says in verse 13, All Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. You know, just coming to Bible class single is not enough. He says, come with your wife and children as well. 
to prevail your enemy. Then upon Zaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Zeal, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asap, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. You know, these words are very, very important, dear brethren. The word Zaziel meant to say, beheld of God. And the word beheld over here is meant to say again, Kazakh. You know how you can be holden back to have a perception beyond normal experiences. The ability to say that which could be far beyond your physical presence. The light which pierces through the darkness. You know how he says very simple, dear brethren, it is only when we are having day by day to dig and take the word of Lord God. You know, the point why we take over here to prevail against your enemy is that when the Spirit of the Lord of our God cometh upon this man, or as we look in Second Corinthians chapter 20 in verse number 14, these names are very, very important. The first one, Zazael, beheld of God. How are you going to be beheld of God? The logic is very simple. He says, Kazakh. How you shall Kazakh first build a wall of fortification, make a wall of operation. Day by day, dig and take the valuable, the valuable pleasure of your time to dig and take the word of Lord God, no matter what. That's what Kazakh is all about. First, dig and take. Whether it may be for you a tough time of a job for that particular day, then to he says, first give your time unto the Lord. Have along with your wife and your children. That's very, very essential for us. Without having your wife and children, you may think that you're going to grow up, but he says, make up your time with your family and your children. Then that's what when the Spirit of the Lord of our God cometh upon them, he said, and, the, and all the Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children. And now, upon Zazael, the son of Zechariah. What is the meaning of Zechariah? Jehovah, our Lord, our God, remembers when he will remember. When you have been taking up your time to take, as the word says, Zakir. You know, what is the meaning of Zakir? When you're digging and taking the word of Lord God every day, the next level of perception of your thought will be like a scribe. That's what you get into remembrance. And when that next level of thought is like a scribe, then you're going to renovate your head as per the demands of Bible doctrine. That's the word zakir. And that's how these people, they're not able to realize why the word Zechariah meant to say, Yehovah remembers. He remembers you at a point when you are first prevailing against your enemy to dig and take the word of Lord God. If there is no digging and taking of the word of Lord God, that meant to say you have not built a wall of fortification. You haven't separated yourself from this world. First, what God the Father looks and teaches us when we believe in Christ Jesus of the Lord of our God, several of the passages in the Colossians, or as Christ the Lord of our God says in the Gospel of Matthew, you are the children of light. There is no need for you to walk in darkness, as he said in John 8 as well. He who now believes in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they walk in the light. You know, there is a difference between light and darkness. The same thing what Apostle Paul says in Colossians, emphasizing you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his light, of his dear beloved son called to be the light. So this transformation or the thing what we can call division, separation is what he said. First, building up yourself. Building up yourselves so that you can no longer pass through that now. You do not cross over that now. You're building up. And if you're not able to build up as per the demands of Bible doctrine, your entire life is ruined. So first thing, make sure you cross.
from darkness to light. Make sure you cross from the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of his dear beloved son called Christ. If you are now to be in the kingdom of Christ, then every day make sure you are coming to have a great thirst than anything else which your body can ever desire or any appetite what you can body can ever desire, including your sexual appetite. Anything which you will be driven for that. He says, more than that, first build a wall of fortification and make sure today I've gathered your word of day, gathered your prescription word of God, gathered your day-by-day -day process, which is very much needed. It's more than the food, more than the bread, more than the water, more than the breath or the drugs as the people are waiting, you know, the drugs in the sense of pharmaceutical department, having suffering with your sickness for your heart or for your diabetic condition. You say, if you don't have that drug, you cannot, but you become worst. If you don't take the word of Lord God as number one priority, word of Lord God alone is a great healer for you in everything in this life. Having an absolute con absolute tranquility and confidence in the word of Lord God. You know, if you cannot claim the promises of God, you cannot claim which you do not know. So if you don't know, then you're not claiming. If you're not claiming, you're saying, Lord God is a blasphemer. Lord God is a liar. God forbid for this. If you don't know, you cannot claim. But how powerful is my Lord? How great is my Lord? How wonderful is my Lord? He said, having a mustard seed of faith, it's enough in you. But you're not able to come first to make a separation, to crave for the word of God. That's very, very much essential for us. What is more important in this life? Some may say this, that, or X, Y, Z. You know, very, if you can know the real reason or the real thing that which is more important in this life, it should be only to dig and take or prevail your enemy by taking in the word of Lord God. If enemy would come and show I have 2,000 horses, you should be the man to say I have 20,000 chariots of God. If Satan could say you can come and give in every second 30 horses or 30 kinds of thoughts, you should say I have 300 kinds of thoughts from the Lord God so that I could give and put number one priority for the word of Lord God. That's what I prevail. So he says the very first thing, upon whom the word of Lord God cometh, you find the structure over here. First he says, the man is called as Zazael. The Hebrew word what we can find over here for Zazael is called to be Ezekiel. And the word Ezekiel meant to say behold of God. That meant to say what again? As you go to dig and take with the wall of fortification, the word of Lord God. So who he is? He is the son of Zechariah. And what is the Zechariah? Lord God remembers whom? The people who are day by day taking up the wall of fortification, Zakir, how they go on to dig and take their next level of growth like a scribe. And that's what they have in their head. Like a scribe, they come and take the word of Lord God. That's what Zechariah meant to say. Yehovah remembers such categories of the people who are now growing up to dig and take the word of Lord God as a scribe. He remembers them. They are, they are being listed in the list of Yehovah to be remembered. You know, this is what we are failing today. First of all, we are not gathering the thoughts of the word of Lord God. And we are not being remembered. How does Lord God remember you? You're not being remembered as per the demands. So he says now, who is in return the son of Benania? The word Benania meant to say, again, Yehovah has built up. So the word Bana meant to say what? He builds up in your body with that great vigor and valor which derives only from the word of Lord God. How you have to be built up now? Not as per the thoughts of man, not as per the thinking of man, whatever thoughts or logics or reasons, whatever the world may call, you know, thinking of this man in the stands of rationalism or empiricism. You know, we walk by faith. We don't walk by eyesight. We walk by faith. 
having eyesight is what your logical reasonings, what all you might have achieved, what all you might have thought, for example, metaphysics or this or that, life-changing things, life-impacting things. So you may think lot many things over there. So you are not Baniya. You are Baniya only on behalf when you are able to build up your body as per the vigor of Bible doctrine. But you know what it is? It says in Numbers chapter 14, in verse number 28 it has to be, or 27 it has to be. He says, How long shall I bear this evil congregation? You know, whenever Lord God the Father looks upon you, your congregation should be actually a witness for the word of Lord God. But he says, Your congregation is evil before me. And what is that evil? Distorted thinking in their head. ra -a. And why they're having that distorted thinking in their head? Because they murmur. You know why they murmur? This is very, very interesting, dear brethren. It's called to be loon. The Hebrew word loon meant to say it should be actually to put into lodge or to complain or to grumble or to pass the night by stopping over. You know what they're doing, what they're stopping over and they're passing the night. The pictographical representation for this word for murmur, which has been called loon, the strong code number is 3885. It says these people, they don't have the discipleship vigor in them. You know, why you murmur against your trials, your persecutions, your sufferings in this life? Because you're not a disciple to the word of Lord God. That's very simple logic over here. And he says, how long shall I be in the midst of such evil congregations? The congregations which are saying we will not have discipleship program as we looked yesterday. The visions of their heart rather than the mouth of the Lord. So what they will be? Dumb dogs, no spark in them. No vigor and valor of making to be disciples. Therefore they keep silent, they are dumb dogs. And such dumb dogs have been ruling in the pulpits, he said. They murmur against me. And how long? Till the pastor teacher could take the reformation to make every believer to be a disciple so that the pastor teacher can come with a great covenant of oath before Lord God the Father between himself and the Lord saying that Lord I will not stop but I will arise and I will be awake till the goal is reached I will not stop what goal every day making not only the so-called elder or the member of the family, but even their wife and children should come and learn the word of Lord God so that the only theme and the only purpose for us in this life is to go and make disciples of all the nations. And we don't have any other mission, any other work. You may be worrying about your money. You may be worrying about your food. You may be worrying about your clothing or job. You know, God the Father says, already enemies are prepared and kept. I will make you to enter into their spoil. When you're really taking up to look, the real importance of the mission of Lord God, the real importance of the Lord's plan. He said, enough of food through, for Elijah through this ravenous nature cross, then how much more will he not give you? Who that claim to do the will of Lord God the Father, do you think he's going to feed you to be hunger? No, dear brethren, he's going to give you marvelous things, great wonders. And you're really not able to understand that. Serving Lord of a God is the number one priority. He chose the people of Israelites to be his great witness, but they fail abruptly. The same thing with the church, but now church comes up with a great power, the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, dwelling in them, leading them to the praise of his glory. But what is happening to the church? Rather than being controlled or being led by the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the church is grieving and squelching and waxing and lying and resisting to Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So what they have become? They have become a great failures. You know how sad it is. Because we are not able to realize our true life in Christ.
And yet, dear brethren, God the Father comes up with such a beautiful grace in our life that He says, "Don't murmur." Now it may seeming for it. Now it may seem for you to say that it's not good for us to come to take up our cross every day and follow my Christ or become the disciple of the Word of Lord God. You know what does He say? You haven't able to build up. That's what the word benania. First of all, you're not able to look to dig and take the word of Lord God. You're not being remembered. You're not being built. You, you have been remembered like a scribe. Then you're going to build up. That's what your real vigor and valor is. But if people are not able to be built up because you are having murmuring against Lord God. You are not able to take up your cross and follow my Christ as a disciple to Lord God. But rather you are murmuring, murmuring, murmuring against Lord God. That's what you're doing every time, murmuring. And that's how you're spending your time, murmuring. Every time you're murmuring. That's all these people they are now, murmuring. If you would say, come and carry your cross, follow my Christ, you will be remembered by Lord God. They would say, we cannot, we cannot come, we, we cannot come every day. We can come weekly once, if ever it is possible. But some people are so bad, they would say, we will come monthly once, we will come yearly once. Don't worry, dear brethren, you are not at all able to build up. So Christ, our Lord of God, said, how long? And he calls that evil congregation. They murmur against me. I have heard. I've got report because the thought process and their blood and the viewpoint of life do not resemble the word of God. I have heard. The thought process is not able to become the pale wonders of his glory. I have heard it. And they're not worthy of that. So I have heard. You know, today your thought, whenever you ask you to pray, the thought of your prayer itself shows whether you are murmuring or you may say sincerely you are praying to Christ, but you know your prayers are not acceptable, but in the sight of Lord God they appear to be like murmurings. The logic of it is very simple because you are not praying to be a disciple to the word of Lord God. So here's your report. He knows what is your thought process. He knows what is the blood in that. He knows what is the viewpoint in that. And that's what he says, the thought process. He hears about that. So whenever if there is anyone who is praying, just be careful, dear brethren, what the thinking you are praying, because he know what before you could open up your mouth, what you are going to ask. So better ask the things to fill the earth with the glory of Lord God, Better ask the things of Matthew 28, 18 through 20 to go and make disciples of all the nations. Apart from that, don't ever try to ask anything else. Because you know what? And you ask the things pertaining to Lord God the Father to have a right and true fellowship with Him so that you could be well established, you will be built up, so that you could be remembered, you could be behold of God. That's what, that's what we read, Yakiel, Zechariah, Benaniah, the three names from Second Chronicles chapter 20 in verse number 14. You know how the word of Lord God comes, the people who have been behold of God. That's how the word of Lord God cometh unto them, behold of God. So dear brethren, if Jehovah Elohim shall remember you, then be careful in your life that you have to be built up as per his terms. And you are not being built up, you are murmuring. When you open up your mouth, Lord God the Father looks upon your prayers. Your prayers itself indicate you are far away from discipleship program. If you were in the discipleship program, you will grow up into scribe. And in return, you will go and make disciples of all the nations. And that would be a real meaningful prayer for Christ Jesus, our Lord of God, to ask in his name. But you people are not praying for discipleship program. You people are not growing up to become discipleship program. 
You know what a sad thing it will be to not. So he said, I have heard. Shamma. You may think how Lord God the Father can hear before even he said to uh, Solomon, King David, in his dying declaration of us Chronicles, chapter 28 and 29, be careful with the Lord God whom you are dealing with. Even the imagination of your heart, he knoweth it well before you could speak. So now you may say, how could God the Father know about my inner thoughts? Doesn't Christ the Lord our God exemplified that towards the Pharisees and the scribes? Why do you think in search? And they were astonished when he was saying what was there in their heart. So now if you could look, how could God get the report of my murmuring? He looks your way of life. You're not a disciple. And you may say, I'm having secrecy of my life. I'm coming every day to learn the word of Lord God. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Then what you know? Your thought process of your prayer, what you're teaching to them, what you're exhorting to them, what you're making a prayer to them, what you're trying to inculcate on behalf of the Lord God. You may say that live a good life, live a moral life. Even unbelievers are living such sort of a good life than you. Then what do you need to actually inculcate in their minds? Make disciples. That's what he said for the first time in Antioch, the Christians who have been trained for more than one year in the standards of discipleship program, they were called Christians and how fools you are at not to become Christians. Your reports have been reached to Lord God. Your murmurings have been reached to Lord God. And people may say, we are going to for that church, we are going for this church, we are having such great pastors, we are going for such, such, such sort of a great church where we are having 40 days of fast and so many people follow us. The murmurings are already being heard. You know why? They are not having discipleship program. Any pastor teacher who is not training you up from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, iota upon iota, carrier upon carrier, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. And if he's not able to build you up to come back and learn the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, he is a dumb dog. He has not been sent by the Lord God. He has come to talk about his own visions. He is not the mouth of Lord God. He is talking the imaginations of his wicked heart. Though he may be a great member for, you, for your church or he may be a great man for your town, he may be a great personality for you in each and everything, the word of Lord God says he is murmuring. And you may say we go to such church. He invites the prime minister of the country to his church. He invites the president to that church. So we go to such a great church. We have so much of political influences. <laughs> Stupid morons. God the Father emphasizes, I have heard their murmurings. You know how we can hear. Your thought process itself while you're praying, it shows up to what extent you're really grieving and squelching and vexing and lying and resisting to the will of Lord God the Father by grieving and squelching Lord God the Holy Spirit who is indwelling in you permanently. Therefore, the paraclete guide, what we looked yesterday in John chapter 14 in verse number 16 and following, another comforter, what does he do? He gives you deeper knowledge so that you can have deeper divine strength, superhuman strength, so that you can face any trial or afflictions or persecutions or sufferings. Why? Because day by day you have been led into shagag, errors, by the men who are dogs. Or metaphorically having ill mind, injurious mind. As we read that your words itself are a burden. You may ask, what is the burden of the Lord? Your words itself are burden. Why? Because you are not teaching to them the entire counsel of Bible doctrine. You are not making them to realize that they have a great purpose in making up disciples of all the nations with this life. But you have been telling that you will get no evil upon you. Don't worry. Come and serve. You will get no evil. But, not, but did Lord our God said he will not get evil? That's what these false prophets will do, false teachers will do, false reverends will do. The reverend itself is a false title for the pastor today.
Christ our Lord our God has given you the great title of a pastor teacher be careful be happy for that you don't try to be something great than that you cannot so dear brother your murmurings have been heard he says you know what a great pain it would be for us because much has been given in this church age much has been expected from each and every believer in this church age and the will of lord god the father you know what he says none of you shall perish but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory first timothy 2 4 what a great will of lord god the father on behalf of us the church which has committed to go and do his work but the church is slumbering the church has taken the root of tarshish rather than nineveh there have been more rebellion than Jonah. Jonah at least learned his lesson being into the standards of the belly of a whale fish or big fish, whatever it is. But though the church has tasted from 2019 till to the time of now, as many countries are also suffering yet now from the disaster of COVID, when it was a time of COVID, people quoted, when the sickness or the plague will come to the land, O Lord, we pray unto thee, we turn unto thee, and we pray, you're going to heal the sickness of that land. And that time, you know, every time they wanted to have a Zoom app meeting every day, every day, every day. And they organized for 40 days every day. They organized for lifetime every day. But when the plague has been removed, the people are now back to the same ways as the dog goes back to its own tail, though it has been kept to be tightened for one year, and they would say the tail of the dog will be again the straight will be straight because it has been straightened. But you know, when you remove that uh, tying of whatever you have put for the tail to be straight, after one year also the tail will go back to its normal band. That's what the church has come back when the COVID is gone. Come back to normalcy of the life. 52 weeks. <laughs> Not able to learn doctrine for more than one hour in that particular week. So at the end of the day, 52 hours. At the end of the year, 52 hours. Calculate in the days you're going to give back to Lord God two days and four hours. And if you look into the time, not even 0.5% of 8,760 hours being renewed for you in this particular year of this 365 days if you just calculate what is your percentage out of 8760 hours if you're paying back to lord god the father if you're coming in that into if that if you're coming uh, weekly uh, one once and in that if you're coming one hour and if you're listening to the word of lord god so you'll get 52 divided by 8760 that's what divided by into 100 if you would take 0 0.5, 0 0.5, not even 0.1, not even 1%, 0 0.5% of your time you're paying back to the Lord God. How would you have a testimony like Henoch, the man who gave 82% of his life to Christ, that went to say what, in a day, 20 hours, he spent his time in the presence of Lord God the Father to learn the palate wonders of his glory. 20 hours he spent. 20 hours. <laughs> We don't even find to give four hours the leftover fireless we think twenty hours in a day. You have your tough time to sleep, you have your tough time for business, you have a tough time from everything, for what you're running, for what you're making up your life. At the end of the day to be vanity, you know you're speaking the language of Satan. Because Satan makes you to get into the world, to be occupied in the world, to say indifference or having busy for Bible doctrine. That's what Satan does. If you have been there not murmuring, if you have been there to realize that you have been lacking, you know, John 1, 11 and 12 emphasizes to, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, the Greek word technia, it meant to say disciples. And if you don't have this power of discipleship program, Whatsoever you may be thinking, it's absolutely vain. People may say, we are running such, such church, we are running this church, we are making this, we are making that. No, dear brother, and your body doesn't have that strength. You're murmuring against Lord God. 
And since you are not able to become a disciple, it meant to say you are not even a Christian. So he says over here in Numbers chapter 14, Give up your time to the Lord our God, because your murmurings have been heard. So he says, How long shall I be with this evil congregation? The word congregation is called, dear brethren, as Yada. Not Y-A-D-A-H, but E-D-A-H, Ad. And the meaning of Ad is nothing but, in simple terms, to fix up your eyes in getting every thought into captivity for Christ. And how do you fix it up and how do you get every thought into captivity for Christ? By becoming a witness. So that that could be as a testimony. Every day it's a testimony. Every day have you taken the cross? Have you done the same thing? Every day are we able to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Every day you do the same. So he says, it is a testimony. Every day it's a testimony. So that's what the word congregation is all about. People don't understand today the meaning of congregations in the church. Every day when they account... What have we done today? Have we come to the church? Have we witnessed the word of Lord God? Proverbs 8, 34 through 36 emphasizes, Blessed are the people who wait at the doorposts of the temple of the living Lord of a God to learn Bible doctrine. Every day they come. Every day. Every day. Such is a great congregation. Not these foolish congregations as is people they think having to advertise for themselves. You know, you are thinking you're really doing the will of Lord God the Father, but you haven't been like Zezeel, you haven't been like Zechariah, you haven't been like Benaniah. He doesn't stop there. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, we have a lot many more things to learn from these words. He says over here in verse number 14, The son of Yael, the word Yael or Jael is nothing but Lord God sweeps away. And how does he sweep away? He meant to say, dear brother, in pictographical representation, the strength of your hand to be completely fixed upon the viewpoint of your life. So what will be the strength of your hand so that you can completely fix upon the viewpoint of Lord's life? So the hand, what it has to do, diligently write the word of Lord God. Your hand, Zael, the fourth one, Zael. God sweeps away when you have been strengthened with the word of Lord God in your tent, in your body. You are not murmuring against Lord God. Your reports have come and you are not murmuring against Lord God. You have a great joy and delight in becoming the disciple of the word of Lord God. You are carrying your cross every day and doing the will of Lord God. You know what does the next process Lord God the Father does? Yael. He just simply sweeps off. That means he's going to use you like a mighty force. And you know what is this we are reading? We are reading the genealogical names. For example, now Zazael is speaking the word of God. His father was called to be Zechariah. His grandfather called to be Benaniah. His great-grandfather is called to be again Zael. Again his great-great-great-grandfather. The fifth line, what he is? He has been called as Matania. And who is this Matania? The word meant to say over here as gift of Yehovah. So what is the gift of Yehovah? Matan, the word meant to say. What does he do? He has a double sign of authority to say that. Except Yehovah, Lord of a God, there is no other way of life for us to live on the face of the earth. Except Yehovah, we don't have any other standard of authority to be recognized. That's what the word Matania meant to say. The word Nathan goes to say to say, to give you as a double authority in your vigor and valor and he doesn't stop there at Matan who is he is a Levite what is the meaning of Levite the one who cleaves unto Lord God the one who is being joined unto Lord God so how do you join if you aren't a disciple you cannot be joined 
the word Levi itself emphasizes joining together. How, if you are a disciple, then only you can join, then only you can become a garland, then only you can become a wreath. So here, dear brethren, you are going to join as a garland or a wreath. And then who is? He is the sons of Esaph. The word Esaph over here or Asaph, you can look gatherer. And what does the gatherer do? He emphasizes the word under every pressure, any pressure of life, he comes to open up his mouth only to talk the word of Lord God. So he says, the sons of Esaph came spirit of God in the midst of the congregation. And what is the congregation? Here, the word congregation is called to be Kahel. And there, when we look in Numbers 14.21, how long shall I bear this evil congregation when he says over there in Numbers 14 in verse number 26, is emphasizing this congregation in 27, not as Kehel, but it has been called as Yadda, as Yad or witness. So here Kehel is a different thing from compared to Edda. The word Yadda, which has to be a witness, meant to say they should get their viewpoint of life in getting every thought into captivity for Christ. But over here, when we come to Kehel, the point over here, what does it mean to say, dear brethren? It is a congregation from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, discipleship congregation or disciple-oriented congregation. That's Kehel. From the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun. Why you come to the church? Why you go to that particular church? To be disciple of the word of Lord God. That is called to be Kahel. And that's what we are missing today. What is your congregation? It's not a witness. It's not a, it's not a Kahel. But it has become the ghost congregation. That's what he writes in the book of Proverbs. A congregation where the people are not witness to the word of Lord God. It has become a congregation of the hypocrisy, congregation of the ghost. We may be talking many things that are happening in the world, but first look what is happening to a church. First look what is happening to your congregations without becoming the word of Lord God, without becoming the Lord's mind. What is happening to a church is just look. The churches are not the congregation of Kahel. The pastor has not been sent by the Lord God. If he were been sent by the Lord God, he would not keep dumb looking upon such process of the churches where they're murmuring. The reports of them have been heard in the sight of Lord God because they are not able to become disciples of the word of Lord God. Their murmurings have been recorded in the sight of Lord God. Therefore, in 1 Corinthians 10, 10, he said he destroyed them. When their murmurings were been heard, which is not in accord with the word of Lord God, he destroyed them. And today where we are standing to be witnesses, the same place where the library should have been to enlighten and to read the word of Lord God. For example, you can have in India a place in Andhra Pradesh called to be as a theological college place. It has now been completely destroyed or annihilated. Earlier upon that library, they write upon the word of Isaiah 34. Open you the book of the Lord of a God and read, which is not even current in the English. It has to be after making a darash, thorough reading of the word of Lord God, cry out, Kara, let the people come to know. But now there are no books over there to read. You know what they have become? Those libraries have become as the standards of which you can call to be used as toilets now. Everywhere you find, you're going to find human excreta being put over there. Dogs coming and doing toilets. It will be a pain to our heart when we look what has to be designed, what it was, and what these people that turned out. It has to be Ramantapuram Bible College, somewhere near to that sea river bed called as Kavali Station. 
the places which has to be for the word of Lord God, they think now they have shifted it. Where? They have shifted to some cities. Where in the cities? Where there is no emphasis for Hebrew or Greek or Aramaic. What they have turned out now? They turned out to become toilet places. The same thing over here, what you can look. The assembly which should have been for the word of Lord God, they have become now not to diligently open up the word of Lord God, not to teach the word of Lord God, not to make the disciples. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Absolutely destroyed. The congregations which should be a great witness for Christ, they have become now the congregations of liars. Congregations towards hypocritical men. And you can just imagine how successful is Satan. No diligent study of the word of Lord God. How you can prevail your enemy, dear brethren. So he says, the word of Lord God came upon the midst of the congregation. The word midst is very, very important. You may just think, what is there? But the word is tavek in the Hebrew. And the word tavek is nothing but, these are the men who are having authority to grow up like a scribe in the presence of the Lord. That's the word midst, tavek. These are the men they are having authority. To grow up to be like the congregation of grammatias in the sight of the Lord. That's the word meant to say tavek. They're having this tavek. They're having such authority. Among them the word of Lord God cometh in the congregation who have been from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. Nothing but disciples, disciples, disciples. Dear brethren, take it granted. Christ our Lord our God began his ministry in the midst of disciples. He handed over that ministry to the disciples. Partaking in the Lord's table, he said, if you are a disciple, come and take the word of Lord God. If not, don't come to partake in the elements of the Lord God. If you are not a disciple being trained for more than one year, you cannot even be called to be as a Christian. Don't be dumb dogs in these points and try to get your name to say that you will be a great preacher, this or that. Great many people are following you. You are deceiving your own self. You are getting blasphemy to the name of my Christ. What the Bible says, if you want to teach what the Bible says, if you want to be the mouth of the Lord of a God, then teach them discipleship program. If not, your murmurings have been already reported to the Lord. Whenever you open up your mouth, he knows very well what you're going to pray. And if in a prayer it is not a process of having a pump in your blood to fix your eyes completely on the word of Lord God in making disciples, then he can easily understand up to what extent are you to the Lord. Up to what extent are you in the presence of the Lord. Up to what extent you can be. He knows very well. In very, very simple terms, he knows very well. And what is happening today? You haven't been well to realize that your congregation of your church is not even a witness. It is not even a congregation of discipleship program. It is just a congregation of ghosts. A congregation of liars. When I've been sanctified and kept apart and come to the church, there is no need for you again to take bath. It is a place for you to wash your hands and legs and come back to learn the word of Lord God. Washing your hands and legs, that doesn't mean to say that you have been still partially light or partially dark. You should know to come to a decision that you are not been there in the midst of such liars or hypocritical men. But now you are in the midst of truth. So walking in the midst of truth, you need to be absolute holy. You should know your rank. You should know your presence. You should know your privilege. You are called to be the heavenly citizen in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ, so he cannot let go of them so easily. And they're having something great to learn in this church age. The impact of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. And that's what we're doing. Where is your congregation? The congregation of discipleship, the church, if it is not making disciples, or if the universal church 
doesn't have disciples, then Lord God the Father would say, Workers of iniquity, depart from me. I never knew you to the so-called false pastor teachers at one end, and for the others who are saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we eat in your presence? Didn't we drink in your presence? Didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? Then Lord God the Father would say, In accord with fact and truth, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. That would be the point for your life. You miss a Lord, I was a virgin. At Lord God, the Father would say, you are a foolish virgin. You are not a wise virgin. If you were a wise virgin, you would have made known to become disciples as number one priority in your blood. You would have gone to make disciples of all the nations. So upon whom he maketh to come, he says now he came in the midst of work, the people who are having the grammatical right of authority. And he says, Hearken, you all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Yoshaphat, thus said the Lord unto you, Be not afraid. The word afraid, Yare, 3372, it's not 3373. And the word 3372 meant to say, Not be afraid about this earthly way of life. Even as well in chapter 20 of verse number 14 of Second Chronicles, we have for the first word, Zazael, we have the combination followed by 410. And the word 410 rather than 430, it emphasizes what a man can be when they are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. 410 emphasizes what an ordinary human being, as we can tell mighty God about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The word God is 410, meant to say, in the form of humanity, what he became for us incarnated. The same thing now, if every human being or every human being who is a believer in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, can be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he can also be as gods to these people. John chapter 10 verse 35, what we find over there, to whom the word of Lord God came, they became gods. You know, that's what it is. So the curd, he begins over here for Zazael 410. Again, we can find Zechariah also. It is a code standing with 3050. Again, the code 3050 or 3068. It is called for Jehovah. So, being filled up with the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you can go on to express to these people the word of Lord God as what you have been kept to open up your mouth to learn the truth so that you have been called to seize your ways from that which goes to error and look upon the ways which cause you and to teach you and to make you to learn the truth. So you're going to become the word of God 410. You're going to become 3050. Again, they get the word Benaya 3050. Again, the word Zael we get 410 code, again followed by the word Mataniya, gift of Jehovah, 3050. Again the word Asif, it is not having any code, but here whenever the names have been ended up with L, they meant to say 410 or 3050. So now here we look, dear brethren, saying that, and he said, Hearken you all Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Yoshaphat, thus said the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, 3372 core, it is not 3373. 3373 meant to say godly fear, which Jehovah Elohim says towards Satan concerning Job. But Satan concerning Job towards Lord God, it says, 3372 fear he has. That's the difference. He says he's having the worldly fear, the fear that he will take away his property, his wife, his children, or whatsoever it is. You know, about men have, why they come to Christ, they think they're paying the poll tax every day, because if they're not able to give that, God will take away that property. God will take away that peace. God will take away that prosperity. That's what they think. What they're having, the fear of their life. You know, God the Father says, those who do the will of Lord God the Father, they're going to enjoy this privilege till to this children children so no fear of death till to the fourth generation they stay so no fear of death only what you need to do be not afraid go on to do the will of Lord God the Father every day make up your time to learn the word of Lord God every day take up your cross every day do the will of Lord God the Father greater than anything else on this earth so he says dear brethren Therefore, thus said the Lord unto thus said the Lord God unto you, be not afraid. Three three seven two. Number two, be not dismayed. 
The word dismayed over here meant to say, Dear brethren, do not be worrying about the wall of fortification, about the thoughts of these people who have come up, saying that this is their authority. So he says, do not be dismayed by reason of this great multitude. The people, the way how they have come, Amnon, Amnon and the Moabites together, he said, they have that to open with their mouth. So don't worry about them. Of this great rub, meant to say much of the thinking, and the word multitude is nothing but having in them the blood and thought process to show they're really having great joy. And therefore he says now the great word, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord. The word battle over here, it is called your brethren as Milkama. And the word Milkama or Milkaim is nothing but you have to be a disciple. And when you're a disciple, the thought process will be in such a manner, being differentiated from the world which drives your blood. He says, you fear no evil. You fear none of these people. But what you do now, you're going to get back into the standards of making Lord God the Father to prevail against your enemies. So now he says, tomorrow go down against them. The word go down meant to say, make up your thought process to be as per the demands of the word of Lord God. Every single thought, behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. You shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Yaroel. Behold, they come up. How they come up? They come up with their level of discipleship program, with their well-prepared thoughts. So he says, they will come up by the cliff. The word cliff is meant to say again, the viewpoint of life. And what is the word ziz? Ziz meant to say they come up like the sweet essence of a flower. And what is that sweet essence of the flower? It meant to say with lots of trouble, with lots of pressure. They say they are also well prepared. They say they are also being well equipped with their life. So they're going to come up with pressure. So don't worry about that. Ziz meant to say flower. And the word flower over here in the pictographical representation meant to say what? Double time pressure upon your head. That's how Satan puts in your mind. Every time pressure, pressure, pressure. And that's what they do. Every time pressure. Every time you come, it's a pressure. So he says, they're going to come by the cliff of Ziz. What pressure? Worrying about this, worrying about that. And then you shall find at the end of the brook, you're going to encounter that at the end of the brook. <clears throat> the word brook meant to say, having them to be like an inheritance, which they continue. So nakel. And what is the end of the brook? It comes to an end if you are a disciple. If you are not a disciple, it will not come to an end. So he says, before the wilderness of Yeruel, again the word Yeruel meant to say, taught by God. That meant to say what? The teachings or the fear in your head being taught by the men in the standards who claim to be God, as we find today, false men. So he said, you shall not need to fight in this battle. That meant to say what? The viewpoint of men, what they're teaching. Do not fear about their curses, do not fear about their blessings, do not fear about their verdict, what they say to you. If they're not making you disciples, they're really making you to become hell twice than them. So he said, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand you still like a pillar. Fix your eyes, fix your blood to get every thought into captivity for Christ and then see the salvation. The word, the work which the shepherd can go to teach to do the word of Lord God. Again he says, O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, neither be dismayed. Tomorrow you go out against them, for the Lord God be with you. So dear brethren, here we have a great commission for us to learn. In Matthew chapter 28, he said the same thing, teaching them to absorb all things what I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until to the end of the world. So he says the same thing in Romans 8.31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? The same thing in 2 Timothy 4.22. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with the Spirit, 
grace be with you when lord and savior jesus christ he says be with thy spirit that meant to say is going to strengthen you so you shall need not to fight in the double pressures of this life it is lord god who maketh you to stand still but the problem with us is lamentations chapter 4 teaches in very very simple terms what is our problem He said the sins of our prophets and the iniquities of our priests that have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her they have wandered as blind men in the streets they have polluted themselves with blood so that men could not touch their garments they cried unto them depart you it is unclean depart depart touch not when they fled away and wandered they said among the heathen they shall no more sojourn and the lord the anger of the lord hath divided them he will no more regard them they respected not the persons of the priests they favored not the elders as far as our eyes as yet failed for our vain help in our watching we have watched for a nation that could not save us they hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets our end is near our days are fulfilled for our end is come you know what does he say our vain help and what is the word vain the hebrew word dear brother over here it has been called as hebel hebel meant to say vapor and what is the vapor you know if your body is not a disciple oriented life discipleship for christ he says it is vain before this vanity could be made completely grown up like gangrene or a cancer which spreads wake up to become disciples dear brethren your murmurings have been heard before the presence of lord god the father therefore he said in first samuel chapter 17 in verse number 50 david prevailed how he has prevailed he became a kazakh oriented believer first of all he built a wall of fortification in such a manner to dig and take the word of lord god no matter what from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun no matter what every day to come and do the will of lord god the father that's what he did it if you first build that great decision in your life no matter what every day i need to take up the word of lord god no matter what every day i need to become the will of lord god no matter what if you first make up that decision in your life if you come to carry your cross if you come to follow my lord if you come to become the will of lord god the father if you come first taking that decision in your life you will really have a great joy in your heart and it becomes a practice the trials and persecutions and sufferings because you have to prevail in the superhuman energy of the lord god which operates in you so they come back to say they have a form of godliness but they deny the power thereof denying the power thereof it meant to say what they are not able to endure kazakh strength every day they're not able to become what has been demanded for us in the word of lord god every day and that's what these people they're trying today in the pulpit not able to become what has been demanded for us to be in the word of lord god every day and the murmurings are already been heard the congregations of not witnessing the truth congregations of not becoming disciples to the word and if a church is not a congregation of discipleship program or witnessing for the truth then what it is just imagine it's a church of nominal conventional christians it's a church where the word of lord god has been rejected it's a church where the people are not able to become to prosper the will of lord god the father but except to prosper their own lusts they have grown up it's a church where 
the Lord's mind is not been communicated. They communicating the visions of their heart, the imaginations of the mind. <laughs> and since you haven't come with your family and your children, the Spirit of the Lord of our God will not come over there to teach you the truth. To say, stand still and watch the deliverance of Lord God, even until to the end of the world, I am with you. Teaching all things what I have commanded you, go and make disciples of all the nations. If God be for us, who can be against us? Even until the end of the age, let the grace of the Lord our God be with the Spirit that loveth Christ. He concludes in 2 Timothy 2, 4.22. That should be the last verse. Of the life of Apostle Paul. And the man who says that have this strength in you, have this great privilege in you, then what else we need to have in this church age when we are having the grace of Lord God to fight the Lord's battle? So, dear brethren, how many days more? You still want to continue your life not to become the disciples of the word of Lord God? How many days more? Therefore, over here, when we look in Second Timothy chapter 4, he said, in verse number 21, Do thy diligence to come before winter, you bullus greeted thee, and Pudens, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brethren. And he said, The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit, grace be with you. Amen. What does he meant to say? Stand still and watch the deliverance of Lord God. Obey to do the will of Lord God the Father, then all this thing shall be added unto you. There is no need for you to fear men, there is no need for you to fear the thoughts of men. Just be the faithful witness of the word of Lord God, and He does that, and He accomplishes that goal. Just be faithful. Just be humble enough to obey the will of Lord God the Father. And you know what we are doing today? <laughs> we are not able to realize we need to come to Christ with our family, with our children to prevail against your enemy. <laughs> if you are having insurance, you need to have insurance for a complete body. It doesn't, go, it doesn't go to give an insurance only for your head. It gives insurance from the top of that to the top of the feet. If you have any mistake or if you have any gangrene, if you have any other thing damaged to your hand. So you come now to say, because of this also you can claim insurance. If, it doesn't, if you say, no, I have only insured for your head. Then you would say, what is this? The same thing, your family is a complete body. Before Christ, you should be insured full, not just the husband or the wife, but all the children being put together. They need to prevail. If not, Satan is a very cunning fable. It knows very well how to attack you. Through whom to attack you. Having an insurance upon your complete family will really help a marvelous things to be done. So, dear brethren, if His Spirit is with us till the end of the age, why we shall still prevail to be in darkness? Wake up, as I said in Ephesians 5.14. Arise, awake, because... The days are evil. The salvation is very, very near than you expected. So he says, Awake you that sleepeth and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Because the way what you have been expecting your salvation to be something far, he said that salvation is very, very near. So he says the word agairo, to arise from your sleep. Arise. Don't stop. Arise. Therefore he said, 
See then that you walk circumspectly. The word circumspectly, acribos. The earnest demands of Bible doctrine, accurate demands of Bible doctrine, walk according to that. That which has been called to be perfect, not as fools. The word are so far, so are negative to doctrine, negative to the wise mind of Christ. Don't be foolish, but rather be so far, as meant to say wise, the people who have been well learned, the people who have been like the Christian teachers. And who is, every, who is Christian teacher? Every believer is a Christian teacher. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. Looking upon the time, you should be communicator of Bible doctrine. And you know what? You are the heavenly citizens the earth shall ever face to realize. And tomorrow will be asked for account. Why you couldn't prevail your own enemy in your own volition? The world, the flesh, the devil. Why you couldn't prevail your enemy? You walked contrary to the Lord of a God. He walked contrary to you seven times more. Why couldn't you come back to confess your sins? Why couldn't you come back to become the will of Lord God the Father? Why? What will be your answer, dear brethren? At that time you will understand what have you lost. Because you couldn't prevail against your enemy. With your family and your children, he said, along with our flock, we shall go to give a sacrifice to the Lord. We shall go to give that. As the great revolution brought to the people of Assyrians over there by Jonah, he said. Even the animals also fasted. <laughs> They're just asking you and your family to come with your children. Because the passage says over there in the book of Micah, you may escape lion in the forest or bear in the forest, but will have come to your home to wash your legs. A serpent may be between the walls and bite you to death. <laughs> you know not. So, dear brethren, obey the mandates of Lord God. Don't think God the Father is going to give you peace and prosperity when you're walking contrary to Him, when you're murmuring, when you're not having that strength of vigor and valor as disciples to the word of Lord God. Don't think Lord God the Father will ever be happy to walk with you in such a way. And yet, dear brethren, how many days more? If you still reject the truth, it meant to say uh, having a consciousness which is not made up of heart, not made up of flesh, but made up of stone, seared consciousness, sealed consciousness. And yet, dear brethren, how many days more? You want to murmur, your reports have been heard to the Lord. And he claims, how long shall I be with this evil congregation? distorted thinking congregation from the simple rules of Bible doctrine. Though being sealed unto the day of redemption by Lord God the Holy Spirit, how many days more it shall be an evil congregation to me? How many days more? And that how many days more, dear brethren, you want to live such a life? Will you be in the evil congregation or will you be in the congregation where tabak, every believer is growing up to from disciples to grammatias, fulfilling Matthew 13, 52, in order to go and make disciples of all the nations, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Because even until to the end of the age, Lord God the Father is with us in his spirit. How many days more you want to be in such evil congregations? Lord God the Father hears your every report.
When you open up your mouth, your thought process that pumps your blood, that goes on to be the viewpoint of your life, he knows it very well. And he looks whether you have been praying for discipleship program or you're still praying your murmurings to the Lord. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, Colossians 1, 9 through 12, Philippians 1, 9 through 12 should be the real essence of your prayer life. And if you miss them, <laughs> Whatsoever you pray, they are murmurings unto the Lord. He hears them. So take up your cross, wake up from the sleep which you sleepest. Arise from the dead. Don't be fools. Be wise men. Walk circumspect with redeeming the time. By not grieving or squelching or waxing or lying or resisting to Lord God the Holy Ghost. But have a witness to be the sons of like Zazael of Second Chronicles chapter 20 in verse number 14. The sixth, the generation of man. Being built up in the word of Lord God to become the valuable glory of his essence on this earth. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God the Holy Ghost led us to the praise of his glory. In his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head, bowed, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In audibly telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall come to confess your truth by learning the word of Lord God. And for the greatest thing for the past teachers is to carry Sathan Lagan, herald the word in season out of sin, because the Dharma to my witnesses where they have been called. The number one Dharma to my witnesses from the Trinity, if out of the Bible in our hands, and number two Dharma to my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not what besides nature, the entire angelic course will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory, in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to have fellowship with you through the word, to understand, rather than being in the evil congregation, or a congregation that which is not to the word, Help us, O Lord, to stay in the congregation of your Kahel, where from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, they're worrying about the discipleship program, and they could understand it is not a murmuring against you, O Lord, but rather in return, our reports being coming into the presence, we shall be the people to be all the time for disciples, making disciples-oriented life, and make our life to be number one priority in making your will, your pleasure to be fulfilled through our lives. So, Father, fearing not any evil on this earth, when we humbly obey to thy word and fulfill thy truth, we would rather be not dumb dogs, but rather we would be a faithful dogs in proclaiming your word as Caleb word which we have learned to go and make grammatious disciples in our thought process all the days of this life. Two section, Father, we pray, bless us by this message and give that which has been needed for us to learn from this revolution. In Christ, much for us, pure, gracious name, we pray, Father. The Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name, we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.